hello again and welcome back to the channel um, what I want to do today is to kind of show you guys how to configure a nano bridge m5 um, these nano bridge m5 devices or these wireless devices are used to connect really large distances and so if you're talking about connecting a, a for example an office that is three miles away or four miles away um, that can be done using these five gigahertz devices right they're a little bit different from your traditional access point that you're used to for home so just bear that in mind um, these of course come with an external antenna that can be used so let's check out that video all right welcome back um what the first thing i want to do is that i want to connect to my nano bridge m5 um the default ip for for this is given um on their website you can find it, default ip um default password um and so the default ip for that is 192 .168 .1 and so what I did is that I just did a reset on the device because these are not um, new devices but I'm reusing one that I had um, set up already and so I want to show you guys the setup for that um, and give you an idea of how to set up a long-range wireless link using um, the 5 gigahertz um, tile that these, that these devices offer so the first thing we want to do is to get the browser open um, then we will Type in the address which is 192.168.1.20 I found my first mistake so I can't type in, I'll, I'll just stop this I can't really type in the address directly into the web browser if I haven't configured the network card first to see the device now the device is on the 192.168.1 um, subnet and so it means then that I also have to go in and put in an IP address into my computer in order for the computer to be able to talk to the device so let's do that so I'll go to the control panel network and internet network sharing center um, let me just disconnect my wireless so I get it out of the way and in my Ethernet card, I will put in an address and a TCP IP version 4. I will put in an address and this will be 192.168.1. And this can be any number between 0 and 255 as long as it's not the default for the device which is the 1.20. So I'll put in this 222. So because I know that it's out of range. Subnet mask should be 255.255.255.0. So that's your slash 24. Um, I leave the default gateway empty. Because I just want that this my computer is able to communicate with the device using the same set of IP addresses. So okay. And okay to that. And we'll close that off. So now in my browser. I should be able to type the 192.168.1.20 and push the enter button. It says connection not private. This is okay. I'll advance and proceed to the device itself. Good. So we are at the first screen um, for the configuration of our device, um, which is again it's an Anabridge M5. Um, the default username for these is UBNT and the default password is UBNT I'll select country United States there's only three options I don't know why there isn't more in the list I guess these are the territory where they are sold anyway um, agree to the terms and log in good so you're now in the configuration for the device um, one of the first things we, we, we need to talk about is that I want one of my devices be the 
access point, meaning that that device will be sharing that connection and one device will be a client. And so you'll have your access point, your client device talking to each other. It means then that you can have various clients hooked up to a single access point, right? That's in multi-mode. And so I'll have, in, in our case, we're just doing a point-to-point, -point, so it's one device speaking to the other one directly. And so we're just um, configuring one and, as an access point and then have the other as a client device. So first thing I noticed then is that these are all default. And so I'll go to wireless. and i will configure this first one as an access point and so i'll choose there so at this point if i want it as a station which means that i'm getting a connection from that from that device then i would want it as i'll place it as a station but for now we're configuring as an access point because we wanted to distribute that signal so access point um this wds transparent bridge i normally enable that um that kind of have a device function like it's like if it's on a single wire the country united states that is good the mode i have it as a mix a and n um channel width 40 megahertz um 40 megahertz gives you the maximum speed that this device can carry which is what you normally would leave it in especially when you're dealing with the 5 gigahertz device um there are times when I do change down to 20 megahertz and it depends on the level of interference you're having from other devices within the area. Now 20 megahertz I would use in areas where the vision is not too clear because these um, devices highly depend on line of sight. Um, but for the most part you want to use 40 so that you can get the maximum speed from these devices, right? So I'm at 40 megahertz. Um, channel shifting, I'll leave it as is, frequency on auto, again if you're in congested area you would want to change this to a particular frequency, um, let's say for instance you have other people using these type of devices, and remember the channels are, although it shows all of these, um, it's still kind of limited, and so if the, for example I could set it on 5265 and ensure that my other device locks into that specific um, frequency. I leave it on auto because we don't have much congestion in the area and I'm just doing this as a lab to kind of show you guys how to configure the devices. Antenna, your device may come with two different feeds. It might be a 22 dBi feed, uh, which is one of the smaller dish and it might, it can also be a 25 dBi feed, which is the larger dish, which, which means in theory that you should be able to push um, further distances using the 25. Of course, the output power then determines um, the, how far you can push. Um, think about these wireless devices kind of like a flashlight with the reflector. If you hold a flashlight up um, and, and you have a larger reflector, it might be able to um, send that light even farther in a close spectrum compared to the smaller ones. Right? But 22 dBi um, antenna and a 25 dBi antenna you should be able to push. Um, some mileage with those, right? And the feed only, and the, by feed they're referring to this, right? The feed only um, carries 3 dBi, which is what we're setting up. So I don't have to have it inside the device in order to set it up. Um, I'm, I'm going to set this, uh, the antenna that I'll be using is a 25 dBi. Uh, I'll drop the power ratio a little bit, and the power ratio um, the, is determined by distance or the amount of interference again um first signal there are times that i would have to drop the power down um, if my quality of the, the quality of data being sent across is not good i notice that when i lower the power a little bit it gets a little bit better right, all right or you could just blast this these little fella all out and get maximum um, data transfer rate from it all right all the rest remains the same um this is the transfer rate i leave it at the highest so I can get up to 300 megabits per second. Um, security, you can specify the security that you want for these. I'm going to use this one, WPA AES, as my security protocol. Um, and then you'll put in a WPA um, password share key that will be used to, that will can also be replaced in the other devices um, that you want connected to this particular access point.
Um, I'm going to place in a password and we're going to call this password ubiquity. So you be pretty. Make sure. Yep. So I'm just placing in a password for right now so we can try these devices to make sure that they connect and so that I can show you how it's done. Um, be sure to use strong passwords on your devices. Remember that your password is your first line of defense, right? When it comes to people accessing your devices. Alright. Um, already below it's asking me um, to change my system password. I'll do that in a few. I'll show you to do that on the other end, right? So I also want to change my SSID. And your SSID is what the um, client sees or what people see whenever they scan for your particular um, wireless signal. So I'm calling this my, my link. Capital M, capital L. So I'm calling this my link. We are at 40 megahertz, so this device should function at full speed. We're using a 25 antenna. We're operating at 18 dBm power, um, and we have a password for it. Ubiquity. Good. So click on change. And at this point, I can click apply, and it will reset the device. Um, but there are other stuff that I want to change before I actually reset this device. So I'll go to network. I want to change from the default IP address and there, there are a lot of different configuration that you can use for these. Um, there should be a little bit more advanced configuration, right? Right now it's on simple. If you wanted to, you could place it on advanced and it gives you a lot more features um, that you can fool around with. For example, the firewall, um, there is a traffic shaping that you can also use to shape down the traffic um, that goes through these, these devices. So I can limit the traffic, for example, to just 25 megabits per second on these devices if I wanted to, right? But by default, the normal is that you're just pushing signal out and you can do traffic shaping on the router itself. Uh, but these also work fine for traffic shaping. But we're not doing that today. So I'm going back to simple configuration mode. And I could do another video on some of the advanced configuration mode if you want to. Um, if it's that something that you want to see, um, leave it in the comment below, let me know, and then I'll do a follow-up video to this. Alright, so I want to change my IP address to something different so it's not default. So I'm going to put it at 30, gateway at 1.1, .1. the DNS, the primary and secondary DNS, I don't have to specify these yet. Um, I'm not using spanning tree protocol, that's okay. Um, auto IP aliasing, this normally is also checked. So change. So we have done, we're done with setting up the wireless. We're done with setting up my network. And remember now it's 1.30 and the device should automatically recognize that. And now we're also going to look at changing the password for the device. So to change your password for your device, uh, you would come here to this little key, change password, and your default username is UBNT. We also want to change that, right? So I'll click here on the little key. It says administrator username. Um, let's put admin, current password. Your current password is UBNT, and my new password. And I'll put my new password as password to get into my device. And remember, we're only trying, I'm only showing you as a lab, right? Password. So don't go using these weak passwords for your um, device to lock down your devices. Um, device name, it's always a nice idea to put a device name in. So I'll call this my home access point. And this is of course an M5. Uh, one of the things I forgot to mention uh, as I'm looking here is that sometimes you want to ensure that you have the latest firmware for your device. Um, I don't think the 5.56 is the latest for this device. So it would have been a nice idea for me to go back in and perform an update um, to this device. And the, the way you do that is that you would download the firmware from Ubiquiti's website and then simply um, choose the file and upgrade that firmware 
I can also put that in, in the next video. Um, in this case, though, I want to keep this video kind of short because of what I'm showing uh, in terms of configuration. But if you want to see how to upgrade the firmware, um, let me know again in the comments and I'll get that done for you. So we changed our administrator username. We changed our password to our new password. And now we can click on change. Good. Now we're okay. We, we can. So we, we should be fine now. We can click on apply. And this will have our device um, reset or restart with all the configurations in. So there you have it. While that is restarting, um, what we did was that we configured our first device to act as the access point, meaning that that device will be distributing signal um, for the other devices to pick up or for the other clients to pick up. Um, in our second segment, we will look at how we configure the client device and have those connected together. I'm trying to push this connection over a three mile range. Um, these devices are rated to go much farther than that. I have um, configured before devices that have pushed um, a 10 mile range, right? But again, it, you'll have to look at the height that you have that device mounted on tower and ensure that the Fresnel zone, there's something they call a Fresnel zone, is all cleared of anything that would interfere with your signal. So our first device is configured. Um, it's now 1.30. I could log back in. Let me show you that. And my new username was now admin. And my new password was password, right? So admin. And I did password. Good. So we're back in. Device configured. And it is just waiting and the client to attach and it'll show all of the detail here once we have someone or some other client device attached to it right i'll see if i can show you guys um that now so second segment of this video we're going to configure our client device and it's pretty similar to what we're doing here all right so we're going to take a look at the second device um, that i'll be configuring as my client device so I have both devices here. This, this one I've configured as my access point, and this one will be a client device. So this will sit down at um, my second location to attach to this device. So they'll be talking to each other, right? Now, like I mentioned before, the process is generally the same. Uh, we want to configure the second device though as a client device that will be seeing the access point. So let's do that. I'll open a new tab, and again, the default IP address is 192.168.1.20. Um, default username, so you guys remember, is UBNT. UBNT as a password. United States, I agree, login. Now, um, this is a little bit different in terms of, well, the configuration is basically the same, you're specifying it to be a client. So, in wireless, I think, I'll choose a station, I'll enable the transparent bridge, and if you don't remember the SSID that you're connecting to and that other device is on, then you can just select from here the device that it finds in the same range. So, I'll do select. If I remember it, I could type in the name directly along with all the credentials. So in my case, if I don't remember it and I'm just searching, then I can check the one that I want, which is this one, my link, and select or lock on. You don't want to choose lock on to add to the access point. And it is always a better idea, although I'm not doing this, it is always a better idea to lock on to the MAC address of that particular device, right? In my case, I'm not too worried about locking onto the MAC address uh, for that particular device. If there was another device with the same name traveling or um, working at the same frequency, you would then have um, conflict in terms of um, the type of device that you put in, right? Or the, the connection to the device. So using the MAC address would have been a great idea. 
but I'm not doing Mac address today. Uh, we are again we're looking at I have this as auto working on station. I the antenna feed I'm using will be 25 dBi on that other side. I'll also drop the power to 18 just to drop it down. Um, and then our password. Now the password I placed in was what ubiquity. The same password ubiquity. I'll dismiss this. I'll change it afterwards. Change. I also want to go back and change my network. So I had the last one as 30. I will put this one as 31. Right? Just so it's close enough. Uh, Alt IP anything. Change. And I don't think I have to enable this, but it's okay. It's just bad habit. Uh, next thing then is to we'll change this. We'll call this my client one. I'll change my username again to admin. My default password was UBNT. My new password again for this device. And you can have a different password for the device itself. It's password. So change. Again, you notice this one is a little bit more updated than the last one because I did some upgrade to the firmware on this already. And apply. So again, the concept is that our client, we should be able to connect to our access point. And so you can have multiple clients connecting to the same access point, right? Um, so the configuration means then that they are both on the same IP block. 192.168.1.30 is our access point, while 192.168.1.31 is our client. And then we can have several different clients connecting to that same access point. Um, and again, these devices are used for long range connection. So let's get back to it. 31, we log in. So it's admin, and my password was password. Good. So when these devices start communicating because they are looking for each other now, that should show here along with the frequency that they are locked into and then the distance um, from each other, right? So let's wait and see. It takes a little while to do the handshake um, with the other device. So we'll, we'll just look at that and see what happens. Yep, there we go. So my access point is on and my client device is on, right? Um, and that's my rate that I should be getting in terms of speed. Um, we should be able to transfer here 90 by 90 uh, megabits per second. Uh, again, that depends on now how you have the device turned to each other. Remember, these are just the internal feed. Actually, no, I've, I've specified them to be the 25, um, the 25 dBi antennas, but so they are, they're kind of looking for each other in that range. Um, these devices can transmit up to 300 megabits per second with it um, through device. I st still am uncertain in terms of the carrying capacity because I have had very good installation in terms of signal, like what you're seeing here where the air max capacity is good and the air max quality is good. And I've only been able to transmit um, about 50 megabits per second, right? Uh, and again, again, that depends on, I guess, the alignment of the antenna, right? There are also, I should mention, there are also some nice tools that you can use here to align the antenna and to do site surveys and so forth. So right now, I'm in the client device. And so this will show me, and there's a nice alignment beep, if you can hear that. This will show me then um, the access point that I'm connected to. And you know that you're in and you're good. Um, yeah, here's the transfer rate that, that we're getting, right? Which is kind of weird. Um, when I can connect to the other device. So I should be able to connect to my access point through the client device. Let's try that. So I click on my access point. I'm in. Remember that I had already saved this password. And so it shows in the number of connections and where it's connected to. So station shows me if I had multiple station, I can see the amount of noise level I'm getting, the transfer rate, my signal quality, right? And how long I've been connected up for. There was some um, other device that I, I was not sure of. I can kick that device off from here. 
So that's our basic configuration when it comes to configuring the NanoBridge M5 to act as a client and act as an access point. And remember that all I'm doing here is sharing a point-to-point -point, um, long distance connection. And like I mentioned before, this can be done for several miles, right? I, the one I'm showing you right now, um, these are right beside each other, and I'm using a channel of 40 megahertz. Um, but I have also done these connections to transmit data up to 10 miles. I think these devices, if I'm not wrong, are rated for 30 miles, um, which means that I can transmit at a further distance. Of course, then the, the longer distance, you might start compromising the signal quality that you're getting or the amount of data you can transfer. Um, if there's something else uh, or something that I missed that you guys out there might know in the IT world um, that you want to share, um, please feel free to leave it in the comment. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe um, and let me know if you like these types of videos. I do a mixture of several types of videos. I do some traveling videos. I also, um, IT is my passion, right? Um, I also do some photography videos, um, so whatever I find interesting and I, and I feel like I need to share it with you guys, this is the place where I do it. So again, thank you for watching the videos. See you in the next video. Geek yourself.